let's quickly go through 10 amazing modern neutral paint colors for your home. Whether you're painting your entire house, your condo, or maybe just your bedroom, these are all tried and true neutral colors that I love to incorporate into my color palettes. We're also gonna talk about four different companies today, Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams, Farrow & Ball, and Bear Paint. So whether or not you're a fan of these companies, these are all neutral colors that can hopefully inspire you in your next paint project. Let's start with a Benjamin Moore color called Balboa Mist. And this is part of the Off-White collection by Benjamin Moore. It is a pale, neutral, kind of warmer gray color. And it has a little more depth than just a traditional Off-White. It is around a 65 LRV, which means it's getting close to mid-tone territory. But I think that's amazing in terms of a wall color, for example, because you have enough depth where it's not going to feel like you just have primer on your walls, yet it's light enough that it's gonna reflect 65% of the light, which means your space will feel that much more airy and bright. Balboa Mist is a fantastic color that really coordinates with warmer and cooler colors, more traditional layouts, but especially contemporary ones, because it has that gray element that keeps it nice and soft. Moving on to a bare paint color called Wheat Bread, and this color is as delicious as it sounds. What's great about Wheat Bread is the color is a bit darker, and it also has more of a brown element to it. So you can kind of more so call it a taupe, or at least it's taupe leaning, where you have a bit of beige, but also brown and gray, giving you an earthy, very grounded color. This one will feel a little more substantial, so maybe it's a better choice in secondary spaces in your home, rather than the one primary color that you're gonna put everywhere. But it's definitely within the neutral category, and I find it very modern and sleek. Moving on to Sherwin-Williams, this color is called Steamed Chai. And this color is definitely the warmest of the bunch so far. It's also the lightest, but not by much. Still enough depth where you're going to be able to notice its coloration pretty prominently, but it has this beautiful, warm, creamy, beigey glow that just makes it so beautiful, especially when you surround it with woods and natural materials, complements it perfectly. I could really see Steam Chai being part of the warm minimalist movement where you have a lot of those warmer elements, those cozy vibes. This is a great color for that. Moving back to Benjamin Moore, we got Dove Wing, which is one of my favorite off-whites currently. It's what I used upstairs in the hallway. And what I love about it is it's extremely understated, which sounds boring, but the great part is it doesn't feel overly beige or creamy. It has kind of a light gray vibe, but there is subtle warmth there too. So my flooring is sort of that gray brown wood coloration. My kitchen has some taupe elements, but then my tables and chairs are natural woods. So I kind of wanted something that would just blend into the background and not really pull too much focus, but still have a very clean and sophisticated aesthetic. And I think Dove Wing does an amazing job at doing that. Next up, we have a Sherwin-Williams color that we should all know and love. It's Alabaster. This to me seems like one of those off-whites that you can really rely on in a countless number of situations. And that's because it has that same quality that Dove Wing had, where there's a subtle warmth to it. It's not really in your face, but there's not so much that it's gonna feel yellowy or creamy or even green leaning in some cases. It's just neutral, safe, and reliable. And it's also the lightest color we've talked about with an 82 LRV, which means it reflects 82% of the light that hits it. That's bright enough where I would feel very comfortable having it on my baseboards, my doors, and my trim, even ceilings. There's enough there, there's enough of a whiteness to it where it's gonna reflect a ton of light back into the space, making it feel very clean without feeling empty and lifeless and sterile and stark. Normally, you don't really want that. So it's bright enough for trim, but also has enough to it where you can put it on the walls and it's not going to feel too boring. It has this perfect balance that I really, really love. Moving on to Bear, this is Swiss Coffee. And this is a color that's even brighter, even lighter. And more importantly, it does have that yellowy, kind of creamy quality that is very beautiful and also fantastic when you envelop a space with it. So this is one of the cases, because it is pretty bright, you can actually continue this color on your walls, onto your ceilings, onto your trim, your doors. You can really just surround the space in it just so everything is encased in that beautiful, warm glow. Slight word of caution, because of the yellow undertone in certain situations, if there's a lot of cool lighting especially, you may see a touch of a green tinge, but if you have the right lighting and you've tested this color out, it could be an amazing choice as an all over the house or at least all over the space color. And if you are doing that, make sure you use wall paint for your walls, trim paint for your trim, ceiling paint for your ceilings. Even though it's the same color, make sure you're using the appropriate product. And if you have any questions on that, you can just leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. I think it's time we talk about a Faro and Ball color that I'm very fond of. <laughs> We've actually talked about this recently. It's called James White. And I'm not obsessed with it because of its name. I'm James, by the way, if you haven't met me yet. I love the color because it brings in a subtle green undertone.
undertone that is actually pretty prominent. Normally when you have a green undertone and a neutral, it's usually a combination of yellow and gray coming together. But James White really specifically has this very soft light in the background green aspect that is just very interesting. And it's not oftentimes you see colors that showcase green within the neutral palette. So that's why I really love it. And it works really beautifully with other greens as well. They just coordinate so perfectly. Not quite a pure white though. So it is more of a James off-white, which I think is good. It gives you a little more versatility on your walls. It's not going to just be plain white. And that's what I love about it. Next up is On the Rocks by Sherwin-Williams. This color doesn't get talked about a ton, and I think it should be chatted about because this gives us a more cool gray option within the neutral palette. Yes, there are a lot of tendencies to go towards the warm side of things nowadays. A lot of people love those warm and cozy vibes, including me, but it's also nice to incorporate cooler aspects just to give your palette some variety and some life. So even though this is a cooler leaning neutral, it doesn't really have a strong blue undertone or anything. It's more of a stone gray. It has a little bit of that earthy quality that I really love. Like. And it could be an awesome choice in rooms outside of your hallway. But even if you wanted to use this as like the one color throughout your home, you could. Just be mindful that it is a bit cooler leaning. The undertones aren't quite as warm as the other colors we've been talking about. One color that is extremely warm is probably our least neutral, modern neutral, and that is Faded Terracotta by Pharaoh and Ball. This is part of their California collection that was released alongside Kelly Wurstler, who's an awesome designer. And this color sort of speaks to the current modern trend of rusty red clay based colors really becoming in fashion and it just further emphasizes how we as a people really like color again we really want to go for those warmer vibes those warmer colors as a whole in general and this color gives you that even though this is a terracotta it's faded which means it's sort of toned down it's not as punchy and vibrant even though it may look like that next to something like balboa mist from earlier on in the video but objectively you can really go a lot more vibrant with these types of colors. So in today's context, I would almost give this a pass as a modern neutral, especially if you're using it as your primary color in your space, because that sort of becomes the baseline color. And then everything else around it will be sort of added on. Beautiful color though. Next we have Escarpment by Benjamin Moore. This has been one of my favorite grays of all time, I think. We recently talked about it in the context of being one of the most underrated colors ever, because it is. It's beautiful, rich, multi-dimensional. It has that taupe aspect hiding in the background. It can do so many different things. So check this out if you wanna learn more about 